Page 41, The Hare and the Hounds. Well, this thing's got notes going all over the place. At the top of the page, they give you this little etude thing. An etude is a study piece, and obviously this is one for studying. But I still recommend you go do my scale videos. If you do those, this should be relatively not too challenging, sort of, maybe. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the hare and the hounds, though. You can do the etude on your own. In the right hand, now this is in the key of G major. It's got one sharp. So in the right hand, we have the G major scale going up. If you know the scale, you can already do this. If you don't, we got a problem. So it's one thumb on the C. And the second measure is third finger. And I'm just using a light finger staccato. And that second measure, it's one and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. Again, second line is the G major scale again. And now we're going to do the G major scale going down, but we're starting on an A rather than a G. So when we come down, we're going to use fourth finger on the C. We have to adjust the fingering slightly to account for the fact we started a, an extra note higher, so it's here. You should be able to cross your fourth finger over. We've already covered that. Then in the third line down, the left hand gets all the goodies, and the right hand gets these little, just light wrists. And stay out of the way because the melody is going on in the other hand. They're throwing you a curve. I don't know why they do this, but they did. It's unnecessary, absolutely unnecessary. John Thompson, uh, third line down, second measure. You see these little dotted lines, dashed lines, going between the staffs? That's telling you the melody is going to the other staff. But what it is, is that right here the left hand has the melody, but for that one note in the right hand, it's an E, the bottom note, that's melody. Well, I keep saying bring out the melody. Well, that's interesting. Can you play the three notes here in that chord? This is the second measure, the third line. Can you play the E louder than the other two? Just put a little more weight on the E. And it's staccato, a wrist staccato. And you get this in the next measure too. But it's not for all of those chords. It's only the first chord in each of those measures. So the first chord is here. Second one is here. You lay off. And the third one is... It's, and then lay off. And the next line does the same thing. Now I say it's unnecessary. I'll tell you why in a minute, and I'll come back to that. With this. Left hand. You, you, you have the broken chords at first. Keep them down because the melody's in the other hand. I'm just kind of rotating here. Transferring the weight. Not a big problem until the third line down when the left hand's... Now we get the chords here, and this is actually a D major scale. problem is they didn't need to do it the way they did it because the left hand can play that E, the melody note that the right hand has. It's unnecessary. The, the left hand, can it's got a finger right there ready to go, so I could play this third line like this. So I don't have to play it in the right hand. And so far as I'm concerned, if you'd like to do that, go right ahead. Because there's no rule says because the notes are in that staff, you have to play it with that hand. And I do this all the time. If, if it's, I'll play a notes that are in one staff with the other hand if it's more convenient for me to do so. And in this case, I would recommend you do that. Play the E, second measure, third line. When the right hand gets that chord, play the E with the left hand. Because it's easier than trying to go back and forth, the melody between the two hands. Liszt did that a lot. It was, the hands are sharing the melody. They get, that takes some work to get that all figured out. So that's what I would recommend. Just play the E with the left hand instead. And the last line's about the same. It's no big deal. Bring out the melody, right? 
And now the, the tempo here is allegro. That's fast. That's a range again. How fast is, well, it's going to, depending on how you feel, the time of day and which day or whatever. Well, it's sort of a hare and the hounds. I assume the hounds are chasing the hare or whatever, so it's going to move pretty good. There's a DC alfine. The DC means go back to the beginning. The alfine means go to fine. Fine is at the end of the second line. They didn't give you an end of piece symbol, which I think is an error. I wish they would. They just give you the double bars. See, so take a look on page 40 at the bottom. The very last measure on page 40 at the end of the last measure, there's two bars, a thin and a thick one. That is the symbol for the end of a piece. And at the Fini, that really should have been there, at the Fini. A couple little things I want to point out. It's the little things that make all the difference in the world in music. Take a look at the second measure. When the hands are playing together, the right hand has staccato, the left hand does not. So it's... Can you do that? Keep the left hand legato, but make that... You get it in a few places. Look at the second measure of the second line. It's here. That dot is hard to see, but the F sharp is staccato. And then in the last measure of the second line, the last note in the right hand is staccato. The left hand is not. So it's so the left hand for a little bit is by itself. Let's play this very slowly just to check the notes and the rhythms. No pedal in this, so the right hand is here, left hand's here. I'll give us four counts since it's in common time. One, two, ready, and go, and.